Hello, my fellow Tater and Taterettes. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are in the world. And welcome to the guide. Uh, today we're going to be showing you how to play Valheim on console in sort of a creative mode. I assume most people watching this video know what Valheim is, but for the uninitiated, Valheim is a sandbox survival with RPG elements. Developed by Iron Gate Studios, and it is published by Coffee Stain Studios. The game is still currently in early access on console. I'm not sure when it's going to become full release, but probably soonish if I had to guess. Uh, the game is praised for its beautiful and highly immersive visuals, obviously. It's also praised for its challenging and honestly really rewarding combat system, but some of us are looking for a more relaxed experience, you know, to maybe soak in these beautiful visuals, the ambience of the game. And just play more creative. Some of us, that's that's our cup of tea. Anyway, in this video, we're going to be showing you how to play the game in what I call creative mode. Uh, there isn't an actual creative mode that you can just set, like you would, like you'd find in Minecraft. However, there are some ways to go about adding creative mode features. Be sure to check out the stream every day at 6 p.m. PST at Twitch.tv/Golden_Tater. And you should totally do the like and subscribe and comment thing. There currently isn't an actual creative mode in the game. However, there are some cheats and commands that we can enable to make it feel more like a creative experience. Now, there are different methods to go about achieving a creative style mode for PC players. So if you're a PC player, I'm actually going to recommend you uh, the YouTuber JadePG. He has phenomenal guides on how to do all this on PC because the methods to achieve these do slightly differ between Xbox and PC. And honestly, it's easier to do on PC. So again, if you check down in the description, there will be links to Jade PG's channels and a couple of his videos. Shout out to Jade, he is an incredible content creator. Okay, now contrary to popular belief, most people believe that it is you hold down right bumper, right trigger, left bumper, left trigger, and press menu to open. Actually, all you have to do is hold down left bumper and left trigger, and then press the menu button. The right ones are not required. And this will bring up the game's console menu. From here, you're going to press A to pull up in the keyboard and start typing. And the first thing we're going to do is enable dev commands. And you do that by typing out dev, D-E-V, commands with no spaces another thing I have noticed is that these typically are not case sensitive but for consistency I would suggest just keeping everything lowercase after you press enter on that you will see that it says dev commands equals true under the log there and you want to make sure that it says true if not just type it again and it'll say true it'll either say true or false now this will essentially enable dev commands and the ability to cheat and enter other game commands and the first one that we're going to enter to start us off is no cost. Now this makes pretty much everything in the game completely free. Things like building structures, crafting, and cooking can all be done without the required resources. And you also don't even need to be near a workbench when doing so. So I can place stone stairs even though I don't have stone or a workbench near me anywhere I like and you can also craft anything at any crafting station in the game that even includes your inventory so as you can see everything in my crafting menu interface within the inventory is completely available I can make anything as far as I'm aware there is also no way of disabling durability on weapons and items within Valheim on console so the first thing I'm going to suggest you do is build at least three hammers and upgrade them as far as you can. You can also upgrade for free with no cost on within your crafting menu and in your inventory. So go ahead and craft and upgrade the three hammers and that will prevent you from having to be repairing hammers every five minutes. Because as you get to building some of these larger structures, you will find that you go through durability rather. Now obviously the biggest benefit to having no cost enabled is the countless hours that you will save gathering resources. Because, I mean, that's kind of a lot of wood, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> the next command we're going to be going over is fly. This one's really self-explanatory, and to enable it, you're literally just going to open up your command menu and enter fly. 
And from here, you become One Punch Man. No, seriously though, Fly is one of the more useful commands in the game, as not only does it allow you to move around the map very quickly, it also allows you to reach and build in locations that would otherwise be difficult to get to. It also makes you immune and invisible to creatures, so if you're near them with Fly enabled, they will just go about their business, they will not attack you. As you can see, I am standing in his face and he wants nothing to do with me. Even if I attack him, he just doesn't care that I'm here. Now even though we have fly enabled and we're technically immune to other enemies, another good one to put on is god mode. And to enable that, you just type god, press enter. This will make you completely immune to all forms of damage in the game. And another thing to note on is you can press up and down with the console command menu open before opening the keyboard to go through your previously entered text. So like I can go up and down for God and fly. And now with these three enabled, you're pretty much able to build anything anywhere for free without the worry of dying, but we still have the issue of stamina drain. And as far as I'm aware, there are no ways of disabling that. And there's mods for it on PC, but again, that's another person's video. We console players do have a workaround, however, that being to spawn food into the game. Now to spawn anything into the game, but this is for food, the command is spawn with a space after it, followed by the item ID of whatever it is that you are trying to spawn into the game. Down in the description, there is going to be a link to the wiki containing the list of all the item IDs currently in the game but on the screen are the three that we're going to need right now. So to spawn salad, it's just spawn, space, salad, space, and then the amount that you want. This can be as high as you want it to be. For the sake of this, we're just going to do 10. And if you only want one of something, you do not need the number. Just hit enter after salad, and it'll spawn them right into the game for you. So now you can do all that and you don't get tired and you've gotten to building some nice, good aesthetic looking structures, but you want to move on to some mega builds. And for those of you that do not know, there is a stability system in this game. So essentially, each building resource, wood, stone, whatever, can only go so high before it will lose structural stability and anything you build on top of that will immediately break or will break slowly over time. Either way, it's going to break and it can't be permanent. However, again, there's a workaround to that. Trees, as you can see here, count as a structural stability point. It will reset the build limit of anything that is coming into contact with it. As you see, these are blue. There are various trees you can spawn into the game. Now the wiki link I provided in this description does include item IDs for most of the trees that occur in the game, but I actually was able to discover one that was never implemented into the game. I just found it screwing around with game commands and spawning things, but I have a link to the video of that right now. Book it, do it. Also, the like and subscribe thing, do that too. Help Potato out. Now, obviously, heckin' entire trees can be rather encumbersome and like difficult to build with and build around because they're just huge, but there are other things that you can spawn that serve the same purpose as being a structural stability point. And you're going to do the following. You're going to spawn. Now you're going to type root 07 with no space. And now this is going to spawn you in one of these guys, which is a very small root formation that can be used as a structural stability point and that can be for anything you can put marble on it stone whatever and you also have access to this one spawn root 11 and now there's also roots one through however many i'm not sure how many they are but these are the two best ones that i have found due to their very small frame they're like they're very small some of the other roots that you can spawn are much bigger than this and these ones are very easy to conceal within builds like you could completely surround this with stone and no one would ever know it was there 
Now the use in these really lies in if you want to do like some mega buildings, things like this, or if you wanted to build a tower a hundred times taller, you could just by hiding these on the way up it as structural stability points. You could build as high as the game will allow you. I'm not sure what the building limit is, but I have heard that eventually things start to get weird when you build very, very high, like up towards the root or beyond. Or you could build a tiny little cabin up at the top of the world tree. This view though. And there you have it. Hands down the best Minecraft texture and mod pack. No, I'm just kidding. But seriously, this is as close to a creative experience as I could get in this game. The only thing you have to be mindful of is occasionally having to repair your hammers for building and keeping your stamina up. But honestly, that's not even really that much of an issue unless you're trying to build very quickly. Anyway, I hope you guys liked the video. Check out all the other socials. And that is Golden Tater out.